Hey guys, welcome back to Musings of Mavery. This is your host Mavery, and today we're going to be watching Tensor episode 19. So, first of all, a big thanks to the commenter who told me about how this season is going to end. Um, I'm not talking about the actual story ending, I'm talking about how the episode 24 and episode 25 are essentially special episodes. So, the actual anime. Uh, the season of the Tensori anime is going to end on episode 23. Uh, I didn't know this because I actually started watching this anime halfway through, so I didn't quite get that, that news. So what this means is that, including this episode, we have five episodes left to wrap up the story. And apparently there's a whole nother arc as well, right after this one. So it remains to be seen how they are going to pace this anime. Also, uh, you know, from personally, without knowing anything, I'm still holding on to the belief that probably this, the conclusion of this arc will propel Rimuru to be at least on the same level as a demon lord, and maybe the finale of this season will end with him duking it out with one of the demon lords. At least that is my prediction for now. I, it's a complete shot in the dark, but it would make sense, right? That would be a fitting finale to a season of anime. Um, besides that, there's not really that much to talk about. I know that the Tensor cast hosted a Nico Nico live broadcast yesterday, but unfortunately I don't have Nico Nico Duga Premium, and it's not open to international viewers anyways, so I can't really comment on that part. Um, so yeah, I guess we can only go in and see how Rimuru is going to resolve the current situation. Uh, there were some mention of, you know, some politics, some world building last episode, but since we are now in a combat arc, I'm assuming that maybe, as this series seems to like to do, uh, we'll get a brief mention of it maybe in the beginning of the next arc. So, let's just see how Rimuru is going to defeat Charbidas and his flying shark escorts. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Alrighty, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Is that like a cross between a whale with wings or something? It looks like a mecha from this distance. Oh, the orcs are here. Okay. And, yep, indeed. The Pegasus Knights. Oh, he is. Alright, let me skip this real quick and I'll see you guys in a second. <laughs> yep, sort of like a whale shark hybrid. <laughs> it looks so ridiculous. Magic jamming? That's an... Uh, that's quite a <laughs> troublesome ability. <laughs> Dang. Shark fin for dinner? Oh. Hmm. 
Really? One hit? Wow. Ah, oh, they're working together. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, these sharks are quite stupid. Ah, oh, come on, Rimu. Just let him. Just let her take one. Ah. The ninja group of Rumoru. What? Guess Windwalker or something? <laughs> yep, shark fin for dinner. <laughs> hey, come on, I wanted to hear it. That's mm. Oh, 
Well, I guess he lives up to his name. Whirlwind. Oh? It's been a while since we've seen Rimuru actually fight. <laughs> but seriously, this feels more like one of those bullet hell games. Ooh. Ultra speed regeneration. This seriously feels more like a mecha. <laughs> It's your turn? <laughs> Yeah, say yes, say yes. I want to see her fight too.
<laughs> Dang, is she really that OP? Now I'm kind of hyped. What? Holy... <laughs> that was seriously more like a... Like a mecha anime or something. Holy crap. Dang. And cute as heck as well. I think I'm in love. Ah, so that's how Rumoru got the... So he didn't really defeat it, but he still got the benefits. That's nice. <laughs> Is he gonna get kicked? Hmm. <laughs> you would think that a captain of the Pegasus Knights would have better intel. So there's another mask. I believe Footman was the one who led the attack on Benimaru's village. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh, Karen is here. This guy's surprisingly wholesome. Such a wholesome anime. Jeez. And that, my dear viewers, was episode 19 of Tensura. I gotta say, although I did read a lot of the comments saying how this entire Charbidus arc isn't really a focus within the original work, with this kind of result, I have to say it's hard to argue with the decision to... Uh, make this thing a little bit bigger, right? Because this episode was hype. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I love my world building and politics and all that, but you know, every now and again, you just gotta have these kinds of episodes where you just go all out and just show viewers some cool stuff, right? And we did get a little bit of information here as well, right? At least, you know, for such a long time, it's always been, you know, this character doing, going off and doing their thing and so on and so forth. Now that everybody, everyone has gathered and is fighting in the same battlefield, we can actually get a good ranking uh, or a good understanding of the relative ranks of all the various characters. Not that we couldn't guess most of them, but it's nice to confirm, right? So obviously, all the Kijin are at the very top in terms of their fighting abilities, and Renga as well. Um, I like that they each got their time to shine a little bit, though I guess Shauna really isn't going to be a combat character. All the rest, you know, love how they handled the situation. My personal favorite was still Hakuru, right? Maybe I'm just biased towards these swordsmen, but uh, I thought that his was the coolest. And if you guys have favorites, let me know as well. But at least for me, when I looked at it, I was just like, damn. What a badass. Uh, and then after that, you know, after the Kijin, we have Guild and Gaburu, right? Representing the Orcs and the Lizardman. Uh, I'd probably give the edge to Gaburu anyways. Maybe they're, they are on equal level, but 
at the same time, Gaburu has the special weapon that he got from his father. So that might have pushed him over the edge as well. And then at the bottom would be Gopta. Uh, I know he he did defeat Gaburu before, but at the same time, that was before Gaburu got his name from Rimuru, right? So now that they, they have this equal, I guess, backing, um, I think Gaburu has pulled ahead of Gopta again, at least for now. I'm sure Gopta will have his chance to shine later, but at least for now, we can get a sense of all the relative rankings of Rimuru's companions and subordinates. Um, besides that, I guess let's just talk about the Charbidus fight, right? Uh, I'm quite fairly certain that they parody two different genres or tropes, right? One would be the bullet hell, uh, bullet hell games, where you know if you go to uh, classic arcades or the ones where they have bullets or enemy projectiles flying all over the place. Uh, I think it was especially prominent during uh, Rimuru's fight with Charbidus. Uh, that definitely seemed like a bullet hell scene to me with all these scales flying around and then Rimuru trying to get some hits in and then the eye also shooting out lasers. Yeah, that felt completely like a bullet hell scene. And also, probably it parodied uh, mecha series as well, mecha anime. Um, there is especially two parts to this, right? One is where uh, everybody did the all-out attack, or in general, when, when lots of people were attacking Charbidus at the same time, you know, all those explosions in the background and stuff, those looked similar to what you would see in a mecha anime. And also, during Milim's final, you know, I guess you wouldn't even call it final battle, but it was basically a one-hit KO, right? But that move that she used and how it hit uh, Charbidus was also very reminiscent of uh, mecha anime or space anime in general. Um, by the way, Milim, oh man, I think I just found my best girl for this series. Like, you guys weren't kidding when you said that she was... OP as hell. Like, there's Rimuru OP and then there's Milim OP, right? Because literally the entire Rimuru team, including Rimuru, tried to tried to do an attack on Charbidus and they only managed to get what, 30% of his HP? And then Milim basically one hit KO Charbidus. So yeah, not on the same level at all. In fact, if it wasn't for some people uh who told me just how far up Milim was, I would be thinking that the whole Charidus is on the same level as a Demon Lord thing was a lie, because that was not close at all. So, yeah, definitely new favorite, new favorite character, and you know, my, maybe not even just best girl, but maybe even my favorite character from this series so far. But we haven't seen enough of uh from her yet, so I reserve judgment on best character. Uh, so yeah, that was the Tribidus fight. Uh, something I, I felt was also pretty interesting was how they, in some scenes, decided to animate Tribidus in 3D. Um, I'm actually not sure if that's deliberate or not, you know, a direct parody of these space anime or mecha anime that I'm talking about. Because, you know, there's plenty of other scenes where we see the entirety of Tribidus and it's entirely hand-drawn in 2D. So there was really no reason for them to use the 3D models, especially since it happened like literally for only a few seconds. Normally when you take the time and effort to make a 3D model, you want to have, you want to make sure that you can get lots of use out of it and because it's actually expensive to create a 3D model and it's only, it only drives down the cost if you continuously use it. So there's lots of scenes where uh, it's action packed, where if you try to do it with hand-drawn scenes or hand-drawn animation, it would take a lot of resources. And it's only in those scenarios where 3D animation would come out ahead in terms of saving cost and resource or saving time. Uh, so I'm, I'm not entirely certain on this, but for now, I would say that it's probably because they probably animated it in 3D as a sort of parody to you know the two tropes or genres that I was talking about. Uh, so those are all the fighting scenes, and we also got to know a little bit more about the demon lords as well. So obviously Milim, we know that she is on a completely different level. Uh, we know that Clayman, we can confirm that Clayman likes to scheme a lot, and he likes to do these kinds of things. 
I'm not quite sure how he's going to react to this whole situation. I'm still thinking that maybe he just views this as something fun to do. I don't know yet, but you know, probably we'll find out next episode. And carry on. I was not expecting him to make an appearance so quickly, and it turns out that he's he seems to be a pretty likable dude as well, right? Uh, sort of like the warrior archetypes, where you know, battle with honor and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and another thing that was quite interesting to me was that when he decided to sign a non-aggression pact with Rimuru, which by the way I felt that he he agreed to that rather easily. Um, because having a personal, you know, personal debt to someone is one thing. Deciding the whole fate of your nation is another thing entirely. So probably that this was already something on his mind. Uh, but the interesting thing I found about this, or what I think about this, is that he specifically changed his title to the Beastmaster of his of his nation, or basically leader of his nation, instead of using uh, the Demon Lord title to to make this treaty with Rimuru. So this got me wondering, maybe Demon Lord within this Tensor universe is quite different from uh, from other works that I'm familiar with. So Demon Lords, it's not just because you're a Demon Lord that you gain territory, but I guess it's possible for you to be a Demon Lord but not have territory at the same time. Maybe Demon Lord is more of a power level title is what I'm getting at. So maybe not quite the type where I think um, in a lot of different works, being a demon lord automatically means that you have your own territory and whatnot. But I guess it's not quite the case in Tensura. So that about covers everything I want to talk about this episode. Um, again, I guess from that next episode on, we have four episodes left. Probably going to go into the final arc. There are some characters from the opening that we haven't met yet. So probably it's going to focus on that part. And I guess one closing thought I have is this series is just so wholesome, right? I think that's that's the best word to describe this series right now, and that is wholesome. You know, from from the very beginning, episode one, all the way to here, all the enemies that they've met and whatnot. Yeah, there were there are scenes that are pretty hardcore and pretty savage. But at the same time, the story itself and you know the character relationships and whatnot, they all seem it it actually feels like a cartoon to me. And I'm not saying this in a bad way, right? It, it feels like something like Pokemon, right? So you know, at the end of the day, everybody just goes back. Every, uh, the situation is resolved and everybody is happy again. Uh, of course, some might say this is childish and whatnot, but at the same time, in an era where there's so many serious anime and serious works, edgy works, dark works, it's nice to have this kind of wholesome anime that's also not just a, you know, cute girls doing cute things genre, right? It, it actually still has a you know, a serious story, but at the same time, it retains its wholesomeness, especially combined with the ending song, which, as I mentioned before, really gives me a late 90s, uh, or 90s as a whole cartoon feel, uh, Japanese cartoon feel. So, yeah, no complaints from me about this episode. Uh, so let me know if any of you guys who are worried about, you know, why they're concentrating on this episode, do you feel uh, more pleased now or satisfied now that you've seen that this episode was done in this way? Or do you, would you still prefer uh, you know, the original focus of the stories? At least for me, I thought this was a great episode, a great change up. In fact, as of right now, it might even be my favorite episode. I know my previous favorite was episode 13 and episode 15, but this one, yeah, I gotta say is right up there so that concludes my review um great episode let me know what you guys think and i'll see you guys next time bye bye